Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library, and it is time for another website chat with your state librarian, Jenny Stapp. I feel like I'm working at a news uh, group now <laughs> or an introduction like that. Um, but let me just let you give, give you a little clue about what we're going to do today. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted. Back up. Um, just a little bit of information. Uh, the 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 Vimeo channel where we post the recordings for these events, they're no longer calling them albums, they're calling them showcases. So you oh. might have a little trouble. You sh your old link to the album, if you if you uh, save that link, should still work. Mine works, so I'm assuming yours does. But, does. but if you are looking for that, I'm going to update this information in Aspen, so all of the website chats from here on out will have this new link to our little collection of website chats. I do try to keep the most recent two or three that are up there, but since this is quite um, sort of newsy information, uh, we don't think it has a really long shelf life, so you probably won't find, you know, uh, last year's website chat visible. If you ever want to see one of those, by the way, you can let me know, because we, we keep them all, but we don't um, keep them all available to you. Uh, we have some training coming up over the winter. We're going to be focusing quite a bit on um, Census 2020 webinars over the next couple months, so be looking for those. Those will be real simple introduction to what libraries can do to help Montana get a complete count. If you haven't heard, we have a um, better than 50-50 chance, and I don't know if that's what the odds makers are saying, but a, a, a decent chance of regaining the House seat that we lost in 1990 here in Montana because our population has increased. But there's many other reasons why uh, libraries should um, be interested in helping make sure that Montana gets a complete count. Jenny sits on two big committees uh, for the census. Uh, she sits on the statewide complete count committee. And she also sits on ALA's census task force. So we have a lot of expertise in our state and we're hoping that we can help libraries uh, do some census activities in the spring starting in April. And you'll be hearing lots more about that from us. And today I'm going to pass things off to you, Jenny, because you're going to talk a little bit about our strategic fr framework and our staff work plans. And let me know when you're ready to go to the website or um, would like to drive, and I'll pass the screen over to you. Terrific. Uh, why don't you go ahead and, and pass it on to me? I'll do it right now. Great. Well, hi, and thanks for joining me. Um, before I dive into the work plan, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that um, state aid checks have gone out. They should be appearing in your library if you haven't received them already. Um, and if they seem a little larger than usual, it's because the checks include both your federation funds as well as your state aid. That's the per capita, per square mile state aid. That funding was reinstated after the 2019 legislative session after disappearing from our budget for a couple of years. So we're very glad for that. And then the Federation funds, the Commission appropriated an increase to the Federation grants. Historically, that's been about 176000 This past year, we had an, an increase of sort of a, a one-time only money, and then the Commission made the decision to permanently increase the amount of Federation grants to $225,000, so just about a $50,000 increase in those Federation grants. So that's why you see a little bit larger check coming from the state libraries this year. I mean, like Joe said, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the specific work objectives of the state library for this coming fiscal year. It's been a little while since we've talked about our strategic framework, so I was going to go back to that by way of an introduction to our work plan because really it's the strategic framework and those large priorities for the agency that help us prioritize the work of the staff. And the strategic framework was adopted by the State Library Commission back in December of 2016, so it's about three years old. We didn't 
put any time bounds on this strategic framework, but it is something that the State Library Commission looks at at least every year or so to make sure that the strategic framework and those priorities are still relevant to the work of the State Library. So to give you an idea of what this framework looks like, it lays out our purpose or our mission statement that the State Library helps all organizations, communities, and Montanans thrive through excellent library resources and services. We describe what our values are, and then we describe our roles. And those roles actually come from statute. Uh, these are our statutory responsibilities under what's been established for the State Library. And then when we adopted our strategic framework, we adopted it in a, a model that really allows us to say why these strategic priorities are important to the agency and what we will do to um, accomplish those kinds of priorities. So the first strategy in our framework is to foster partnerships. And as it said, it's because we believe that partnerships are necessary to ensure that Montanans thrive. And it's through partnerships uh, that um, we can continue to move Montana forward. The second strategy is securing sufficient and sustainable funding. Of course, funding is an ongoing challenge that we face, um, whether it's declining revenues or just lack of adequate funds to do our work. And we need adequate funds so that we have capacity to meet the expectations of our partners in Montana. And we also um, want to be innovative and forward thinking and recognized as fiscally responsible in fulfilling our mandates. And then the third strategy is creating a useful information infrastructure. And this information infrastructure in our minds is something that's really all encompass encompassing. It's uh, the people that we work with, the library staff here at the State Library, it's library staff around the state, it's the technology resources that we use to manage our libraries and to deliver critical information resources, and it's the collections of information and data in our library and in libraries around the state that make up that information infrastructure. And the reason why this is so important is that so that Montanans have the services they need to understand and influence change in their communities. So as an agency, when we think about our priorities for our work, we use the strategic framework to, as it says, really frame the priorities for the work that we do and make sure that the, the scope of the work that we do fits within this framework. And it allows us to, to have a touchstone, if you will, for evaluating work opportunities. Um, there's lots of lots and lots of opportunities, as you know, to provide more and different kinds of services but with limited resources, it's really important for us to have this framework that helps us prioritize how we conduct our work. I'm going to stop there and just ask if there's any questions about the overall strategic framework. And thanks, Joe, for sharing that link. You're welcome to unmute your microphone and use that or, or put a note in the chat box anytime. I keep an eye on the chat box. Um, and bring all that information that's in the chat box to Jenny's attention. Although Jenny usually catch it before I do that, but that's okay. So we'll definitely okay. get your questions answered. So at their October commission meeting, the commission took action to accept the FY20 work plan for the agency. And the State Library has sort of been playing with the structure of this work plan for quite some time, trying to make it a, a kind of a balance of something that's useful and informative for the Commission and, and our staff, as well as our partners, as well as a, sort of a, um, a, a ready reference tool to the work that's going on where the Commission can sort of quickly grasp 
how we're doing in accomplishing the work objectives that we set out for ourselves. So right now, the, the, the structure that we're using is, is really just a simple spreadsheet. I hope at some point that we can adopt some more online kinds of tools that can synthesize this same kind of information in a more dynamic fashion. But for now, this is sort of what we've settled on. And this is the first time that in a single document like this, the Commission and our staff have had a chance to look at all of the work plan objectives across the entire agency as we work to flatten our organizational structure and do more work across the agency. So I want to highlight for you today those work objectives that most directly relate to library development work in the library community. I'm going to hit on these at a pretty high level, but I do want to take your questions. Um, and these are just sort of in the order that they appear in the work plan document, so they're not necessarily in any kind of prioritized order or anything like that. And then to start, I just want to point out that we have sort of a, a, a label for the work objective, and then staff document the milestones that we'll go through as we're completing these work objectives, known dates, if any, for completing that work, the status of these objectives. Um, we're documenting the intended impact that we want to have by completing these work objectives. In this way, it's sort of a, a modified logic model where we're identifying the resources necessary to complete the work, the outputs that will occur as we complete these work objectives, and then importantly, the impacts that we, that we want to see from this work. And then also in this document, we align these work objectives to the framework strategy so that, again, we're using that strategic framework as our framework for making sure that these work objectives do, in fact, align with the priorities for the agency. So that, that's just sort of the structure that we're using for our overall work plan. And again, I'm just going to go through these. Again, they're not in any kind of priority order. I'm going to be hitting on the ones that I've highlighted here. As you can see, there are a, a large number of work objectives that reflect the work of the entire state library. Those I'm going to focus on are those that are most directly related to our library development work. And the first objective is just working with the state legislature on an interim study that's ongoing that's looking at the funding for digital library services. Uh, that study came out of House Bill 633 and has been assigned to the Legislative Finance Committee. The Legislative Finance Committee has a subcommittee that includes both represent representatives from that committee as well as legislative representatives from the Education Interim Committee. And their job is to propose different kinds of funding models that could fund digital library services. So at the, their commission meeting on October 4th, the commission discussed um, both a proposed budget for the state library as well as a variety of different kinds of funding options. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know that the, the overall budget is uh, that is being proposed is substantially more than the current budget. It might be um, optimistic, but we feel like we need to ask for the funds we need to effectively do our work. When we think about digital library services, we're thinking not only of those online tools and resources that the State Library makes available, like our cadastral application, our Montana Field Guide, the Digital Atlas, and others. We're also arguing that uh, the tools and resources that we use to deliver digital library services should be included. And we're including in that uh, services like Montana Library to Go, like the Montana Shared Catalog, and some of our other statewide projects. So uh, again, this is the argument that we're making to the Legislative Committee. And then some of the funding ideas that we've proposed include 
uh, across the board funding allocations based on the state's overall House Bill 2 budget and allocation to agencies based on FTE, tying different kinds of state revenue sources like fees that they collect where the um, policy mechanism behind the fees relies on our data, um, looking at different kinds of professional licenses where the professions rely on our data and so forth. So the State Library has prepared a memo and a budget that have now gone to the chair of that subcommittee and those documents will be shared with the wider subcommittee next week. So the next meeting of that legislative interim committee is on December 16th. And at that point, I think we should have a pretty good indication of how they view the information that the State Library has prepared. This work will largely involve me as well as some of our, our leadership staff in proposing these kinds of ideas and then we'll be leaning on some of the other program staff to help us articulate the importance of the work that we're arguing to fund. Another effort that we're going to be undertaking later this year is looking at pay equity across the agency and the reason I bring this work objective to, to your attention is that one of the things that we're concerned about at the State Library is the, the market salaries for librarians in general in this state. They appear to be quite low, uh, certainly quite low compared to other professions, library director salaries in most cases are quite low compared to other department heads within cities and counties. Um, within our own agency, the librarian classification salary range is lower than some of the other professional positions within the agency like our GIS analysts. And so we're going to be considering how we can best and then begin looking at uh, what we can do to influence, better understand and influence the salary ranges for librarians, both at the state level as well as within um, your local libraries as well. This is a topic that's also come up as we've begun looking at the public library standards. And so one of the things that we're considering including in the standards is a standard for library director pay, something to keep an eye to. We have staff working with a number of libraries to do a pilot of the Digital Public Library of America ebook platform. This effort is being led by Kara Orban, our consortial director, and Rebecca Camp from the Montana Shared Catalog, as well as Jessica Edwards, our data coordinator, and Kenny Kettner, our information products lead. The goal of this pilot is to both test the Digital Public Library of America ebook platform um, and, and evaluate how it uh, addresses the needs of the Montana Library Go Consortia in terms of access to a wider variety of material, what kind of impact using this platform might have on holds availabilities. We're also looking at how we can partner with the DPLA to get better kinds of negotiated terms with ebook vendors. And then we're also looking at how we can use this platform to integrate different kinds of state library ebook content that is currently separate from any kind of content available through Montana Library to Go. For example, all of our state publications are available in an ebook format. And we're also going to be looking at how we might take some of the content, the really rich historic content that's available through the Montana Memory Project, looking at whether or not we can make it available in an ebook form and also then have that content available through the Digital Public Library of America platform. That would be the different kinds of print publications that are available through the MMP like the county histories that are available. So some things that we're testing through that pilot over the course of the next year. 
And I mentioned that we're partnering with a number of libraries. We're working with the Butte River Bow Public Library, the Great Falls Public Library, the Sheridan County Public Library, and I may be missing one other, the State Library. The shared catalog system administrative staff are, are continuing to advance the technology behind the shared catalog, uh, looking at migrating to a cloud-based ILS, working to improve the overall security of the data that's maintained within the Montana shared catalog, and also um, developing a, a mobile-ready system. So those are all priorities for the system administration staff of the Montana Shared Catalog. One thing that's important to the Shared Catalog that we've talked about with the executive board of the Shared Catalog, as well as the different user sharing groups within the Shared Catalog, is working with those groups to standardize their user sharing policies. There are four different user sharing groups within the shared catalog right now, uh, BridgerNet, Partners, Th Four Rivers, and then one in, uh, in and around Jefferson County. And they all have different kinds of policies, such as their circulation policy periods and that kind of thing. Um, it creates an administrative burden to have these different kinds of policies. But more importantly, it doesn't allow for interoperability and the merging of these kinds of user sharing groups in the future if these libraries want to um, partner with one another more effectively. And so one of our objectives this year is to pull together a, a group with representation from each of these user sharing groups to see if we can come to agreement on what those policies might be that they can all standardize on and essentially become one large user sharing group and then have standards in place where any Montana Shared Catalog library or a library joining the Montana Shared Catalog would know right away what kinds of policies they would need to have in place in order to partner with those user sharing groups. Joe talked at the beginning of the website chat about the 2020 census, and we have lots of great work going on there, the upcoming training, and then plans in place to really promote the census as we get closer to census day on April 1st, 2020, and then as the census collection period is ongoing into the summer. So um, look for more information about that as we continue to encourage libraries to be involved in, in encouraging a complete count. I mentioned in passing earlier the public library standards revision process. This is a process that's currently underway. There's a task force of librarians that have been seated and they've been charged with looking at the current public library standards, helping us to modify and, and modernize those standards so that they better reflect 21st century library services. They reflect libraries that are really engaged in their communities. We want the standards to be much more impact driven. Right now, most of the standards are documented as um, what library, what resources the libraries have, um, what inputs they're offering rather than looking at the, the outputs and outcomes of library services. And we want to change that approach to the standards. Our hope is that tribal libraries will be able to comply with the public library standards and therefore be eligible for state aid from the state of Montana. So those are some of the things that we're taking in, into consideration as we look at updating the standards themselves. The standards were last updated in about 2008-2009, so it's certainly time to look at them again. The task force has had one meeting and they're currently drafting revisions to those standards. We hope that we can have a draft document circulating ahead of the February commission meeting and that at that commission meeting, the commission will have a chance to weigh in on the draft standards. Um, from there, 
the standards would have to go through an administrative rules process because these standards are uh, rules within the administrative rules of the state of Montana. That process also involves a public comment period and depending on how much comment we get could involve public hearings. And then once the standards are adopted, our hope is to have them in place for a full year before they actually become the standards by which libraries need to comply so that libraries have an adequate period of time to adjust to the new standards. So this is a pretty lengthy process. Tracy's taking the lead on it and, and other staff, including myself, are supporting the, her work and the work of the task force as we move forward with this effort. State library staff, in conjunction with State Library from Colorado staff, earlier this month, held a, a Research Institute in Public Libraries conference in Billings. It was a learning opportunity for attendees to learn more about how to use data and storytelling to both plan for and talk about the great work that goes on in libraries. We talked about um, how to collect data, how to engage our users to understand what they appreciate about library services. We looked at different kinds of data analytics tools and the overall storytelling process to talk about uh, how we talk about the impact of library services. I've said before on these webinars that it's really a goal of the State Library to develop a culture in Montana that's using good data to help us both plan for and evaluate our services to continually improve library services for our communities. We've been progressing down this path at the State Library for a number of years. This is the first chance for us to bring the learning that our staff have been going through to the state. About 70 attendees from um, Montana as well as the wider region participated and our staff are going to be working with that cohort of attendees to apply their learning to specific projects that they identified going into the learning session and then continue to grow this kind of culture around the state. A few other things that you're probably aware of at this point. We are transitioning to Bibliostat. It's a, a vendor solution that will allow us to more efficiently collect public library statistics. The statistics collection process is open right now. It's open through December. So librarians should have received their login credentials to Bibliostat to enter their public library statistics. If you haven't, be sure and let Pam Henley know. The other thing that we're doing through Bibliostat is adding all of our past statistical information so that we can recreate some of our annual statistical reports and so that libraries have access to tools that will allow us, uh, allow us, us and them to, to do some analysis using that historical data. So I'm really excited to learn more about what that's going to look like and we can begin encouraging libraries to do that kind of analysis on their own. Uh, we've talked uh, in just recent webinars about the strategic plan pathway. This is the um, new certification and, and CE offer that librarians can take advantage of where they develop some independent learning models that align with their strategic plans so that their, their learning can help a library accomplish some of the goals set forth in their strategic plan. Again, this was something, a, a, a new continuing education option that the commission adopted at their August commission meeting and Joe is working to implement the system now. So if you have questions about that process, I encourage you to visit a little bit more with Joe. Uh, staff are planning for a number of trainings coming up Later in the year, we're going to be holding a Director's Institute in the summer in June. Um, that will be in Great Falls, Joe, that's correct, right, at the Earthline Center? And then we've got um, some young adult 
services librarians from Montana, Cody Allen and Heather Dickerson are going to be attending a training, a national training put on by the Young Adult Library Services Association, YALSA. Um, all states are being encouraged to participate in this national training where the attendees then can bring the learning back to their states. Again, the, the training is focusing on providing young adult library services. And uh, after attending this national training, Cody and Heather will come back and work with Amelia to put on some training events here in Montana to extend their learning to librarians in Montana. Amelia is also working on um, making sure that there's crisis intervention training, the CIT training. We're offering those primarily through federations right now. And I know that the, the federations that have had this training, it's been really well received. We're working on um, right now developing a limited solicitation for hiring an economic development consultant. Who, and the intended purpose behind hiring this consultant is to help us think about how we can best use our resources and where libraries can best focus their efforts to really encourage economic development in their communities. The idea behind hiring this consultant is based on the model that we use for developing our early literacy programs here at the State Library. We don't have an early childhood and early literacy expert on staff and we haven't ever. So for many years now, we've contracted with Cindy Crispin out of the Bozeman Public Library to sort of be that expert on our behalf. And she meets with different organizations around the state. She makes sure that libraries are included at a variety of tables so that those organizations are familiar with the work of libraries and that we can continue to enhance library development, early learning programming in libraries around the state. Um, it was through her work that we developed the Ready to Read Rendezvous and uh, through the, the good feedback that she provided us, we were able to seek out grant funding for uh, various kinds of programs like um, the, the training that resulted in libraries acquiring board book collections and blocks. Um, we brought in consultants to help libraries think about how to better use their space to promote early literacy programming and that kind of thing. Again, that's the model that we're hoping to apply for economic development. Similarly, we don't have an economic development subject matter expert on staff. And so we hope that we can engage in, in contract with someone who can be that liaison for the state library and for the library community who can um, work with different kinds of organizations and bring back recommendations for how we might best invest in tools and resources and in professional development that will help librarians further their work to support economic development in your communities. And Gail Bacon had a comment in the chat box, Jenny, um, that in Belgrade, they just finished an economic development study. I'm assuming that's not just the library, but the community of, of Belgrade, and that uh, Northwestern Energy actually paid for the lion's share of the work of that work. She said it was quite an amazing process. The, Only the library, really cool. actually, just the library. So that is cool. Oh, wow. I'd love to learn more about that, Gail. And then Michelle, um, just to follow up, says she highly recommends the CIT training. It is a great program. So she's using the training from that all the time. Awesome. That's good to know. And Gail's going to send you some information. Thanks, Gail. Thanks, Michelle. We've talked recently in, in uh, the a past couple webinars about two RFIs and RFPs that are ongoing this fiscal year. One to look at how we're offering ebook services through Montana Library to Go. The contract that we have with OverDrive is um, up for evaluation. Um, the current contract concludes at the end of June, so we need to either renew that contract or look to an, another solution. So we're in the middle of an RFI right now to better understand the vendor landscape for ebook solutions before 
entering into an RFP process later this winter, and hopefully that will conclude with a successful contract by the end of the fiscal year. And then similarly, we're in the middle of an RFI to understand what options exist for the various kinds of services that are currently offered through our OCLC group services contract. We've had that contract in place for going on two decades. And for many years, that contract was just administered through a sole source agreement with the state of Montana because we had always argued that there was only one source OCLC who could combine the cataloging, the access to WorldCat and interlibrary loan services in the way that met libraries' uh, workflow processes. We know that there are alternatives to OCLC for interlibrary loan now. There are alternatives for cataloging services. And importantly, how libraries in Montana are using these services has changed dramatically in the last couple of decades, largely because of the introduction of the Montana Shared Catalog. Most of our copy cataloging in the state now is done through the Montana Shared Catalog rather than going out to OCLC. We have some libraries that are still doing original cataloging, but not very many. And so there's an opportunity for us to think about how we might do that kind of work more efficiently. And then, um, especially with the user sharing groups, the use of interlibrary loan has changed very, very dramatically in the state. And so we want to make sure that any kind of contract we move forward with in the future better aligns with our current workflows and is priced more effectively to reflect how we are using these services. So again, we're in the middle of um, an RFI right now and based on the results of the RFI, we'll carry forward with an RFP later this winter. Uh, and I just want to make sure everybody knows that it's absolutely our intent to make sure that libraries continue to have access to the services that you need to conduct your business. Nothing about these efforts is intended to change that. And also that we're going to be involving the Network Advisory Council and, and likely some subject matter experts beyond the Network Advisory Council to help us most effectively evaluate the responses we get through the RFI and the RFP. We've also talked in these webinars about the Gigabit Toolkit. Uh, you're all familiar with the work that was done last spring with our consultant, Chad, to complete the Gigabit Toolkits on behalf of all of the public libraries. I am really excited about the next steps that we have ongoing using that information. Uh, the Toolkit, as most of you probably know, is a tool that's available through an organization called Internet2, and it was created with grant funds from IMLS. Internet2 has a partnership with Simmons College where they're continuing to evaluate different kinds of options to help libraries better understand their broadband availability and services. We are working with Simmons to ha have them help us evaluate the data that's resulted from completing these toolkits. We're the only state in the country where every public library has completed the toolkit, so we have a really rich data set that they are very interested in. And we've posed a number of questions to their staff, like how, how can we use this data to inform state libraries' investment in ways that would move the needle on broadband access, on um, technology availability and um, reliability and some of those kinds of things. They're looking at how we compare nationally, um, where the, the, the biggest areas of concern in the state are and that kind of thing. And they're going to help us produce a final report back to the commission. I hope it's going to be something that we could also then share with the governor's office, with our congressional delegation and others to argue for additional resources to help support um, the kinds of needs that were really identified through the completion of the, the Gigabit Toolkit for all of the libraries. And Simmons is really excited because, it's, as I said, they have a really rich, complete data set that they can look at. They're hoping to, to perhaps produce a, an academic article and maybe do a professional 
conference presentation using that kind of information. So Suzanne Reimer is taking the lead on this work along with some additional staff, including Jessica Edwards, our data coordinator. Jennifer Burnell's primary work objective this year as it relates to the Montana Memory Project is working with those counties that are currently unrepresented or underrepresented in the Montana Memory Project. Um, for example, Sanders County out in western Montana doesn't have any content at all in the Montana Memory Project. And one of Jennifer's goals is to make sure that all 56 counties have some kind of cultural information available through that, that great resource. What Jennifer knows about her work is that it takes personal contact and building personal relationships before libraries and museums and archives will invest the time in contributing content to the Montana Memory Project. And so a lot of her work involves actually traveling out to those counties and talking to different kinds of organizations. Once she does that, she gets great response. Um, for example, Mark County is another unrepresented county, and she recently met with the, the folks from the Bear County Museum, and they are very excited to contribute content to the Montana Memory Project. So again, that's sort of her priority for the coming year. I think that's about covers of all of the objectives I wanted to share with you. As you can see, there's just a lot of great work that's going on here at the State Library. Uh, we're always excited to engage with you, our partners, and uh, making sure that this work helps you further your goals, helps to further library development in the state, um, and, and that we do so with the best possible feedback from all of you. That's why I wanted to share this information with all of you today. So I'm going to pause there and ask if there's any questions, comments, feedback, any surprises in what I shared. And Jenny, if people want to see updates that are provided to the commission, um, the easiest way to do that is to go to a commission meeting um, in Aspen and click on the resources link and you'll get updated exactly. information every other month. That's exactly right, Joe. Thanks. So even though this particular document it is, isn't online right now, the updates will are provided to the commission so they're available. And there. actually this, this very document, the one I'm looking at right now, is online in the October commission meeting materials. Okay, perfect. So any questions or comments? Um, Annie, this is Anne. I, I just wanted to thank you. That this is a lot of complex information and you broke it down in a really understandable way and I appreciate that. And um, I just wanted everyone to know that, that the public is welcome to attend the commission meetings and you can always attend them online, but you shouldn't feel like you have to stay for the whole time. Um, if you have just a couple of hours or even just an hour to pop into a commission meeting, then, then you're welcome to do that as well. Thanks, Anne. And just about the standards, um, I know you mentioned that in the long overview, but um, you also mentioned that there, you know, that you're looking at um, salaries. And could you just let people know who um, who's on that uh, group that's yeah. working on the standards? Let me just take a minute here and bring that information up so I can remind myself and, and make sure I don't miss anybody. Again, all of this, this is information good because now we get to see how you can yeah. how you actually. Our website. So just from our home page, all of the groups that we rely on, our advisory groups and various task force, you can always find information about them through our website under commissions and councils. Uh, in this case, it's under the public library standards task force. And you can get committee member information right here. So Joy. Megan Glidden, Mitch, Megan Haddix, Don Kingstead, Sandra Larson, Jeannie Lilligard, Bruce is representing the commission, Mark Weatherington, Tracy and Kara, and myself. And the timeline for that is um, just briefly it there. They're, they've, they've had some meetings and... They've, yep, exactly. And 
this the, the timeline is a little bit flexible because we want to allow for the, the most possible input. We had originally targeted December for the draft recommendations. It's probably going to be February before we get those recommendations to the commission, um, but this, this is sort of the tentative timeline that we're, we're working on under. They should be um, on the lookout for those so that you can ha comment on them. So that's some stuff to look forward to this winter. And if you don't know, Jenny always hosts a conversations with the commission at the Montana Library Association meeting, um, which is always uh, a, a, ni a nice thing to attend to get to know who your state library commissioners are and kind of get it. And then the commission often meets too, so that that's, and those are all yep. open meetings. So, yep, absolutely. Good Joe, are you hinting that our, our, our proposal was accepted for MLA? <laughs> It would be really unusual if it wasn't accepted at MLA because it always is. So um, I'm just going to go with the flow on that one. I, I'm sure you'll hear from Debbie soon. The the uh, I went to the program committee meeting and we have it's going to be a really good lineup in the spring at the Great. Oh, Library Association meeting. I'm really happy to see um, all the proposals that came in. So, but my job is not. I'm not a voting member of that committee, Jenny. I'm. I just list what the CE categories are and give advice when asked. So very, very good. Yeah, it's a good, good group to work with. I'm going to go ahead and stop our um, recording if we're all done here and then we'll stay online for a little bit longer in case anyone has anything else they want to say post recording. And if you have tuned into our recording, um, I just want to remind you, you can always view our recordings with captions. Um, if you just go to the YouTube or to the description in Vimeo, there'll be a link to the YouTube version of the recording. And the YouTube version is um, automatically captioned. So captions may not be perfect, but they will be there. And hopefully, um, if you ever have any suggestions for things that we ought to be covering here at the website chat, do let Jenny or me know, and we'll be happy to take those suggestions to heart. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us.